Hey guys, this is FB Plays, and welcome to today's episode of the Minish Cap. Last time we collected the Pegasus boots from Rem, the shoemaker, and I'm just gonna showcase those right away. So if you press and hold A, Link will run forward at pretty much uh, max speed. I think this is the fastest you can go in this game. And we're going to use these to get through the Castor Wilds, but first, I want to see what this is all about, because last time we unlocked a little side quest with this guy, so I'm going to try this out real quick. Even if we hire more people... Okay, I guess we have to talk to this girl, Marcy. Welcome. I'm selling issues of a helpful adventurer's guide. It's called the Swordsman Newsletter. It's full of useful advice. Right now, you can buy the latest issue for only 200 rupees. It's a bargain. Okay, I honestly don't remember what this is. I'm assuming it's useful. It probably unlocks new sword skills, but I don't have the rupees. So I'll just come back for that later. For now, we're gonna head on over to Castle Wilds and hopefully progress towards our next element but I will definitely try to get rupees on the way. I think we have to go through here. Traversing the overworld already feels a lot faster with these Pegasus boots, so I like this item uh, regardless of its use in the main story. Now, anyway, now that we're back here, we can just dash right across. So that takes care of that problem. Oops, there we go. Anyway, this area of the game is pretty interesting. It's kind of a puzzle in terms of how to get around. And I actually don't immediately remember which way to go, so this should be fun to re-explore. If you touch these vines, you will take damage, I believe, so I want to avoid those. Uh, let's see, we got a bunch of bridges here, some vines. Looks like we can get to a bunch of different places. I'm not sure what's down here. Now that is one nasty looking statue. That eye has such an evil glower to it. I actually don't know if that's pronounced Glower or Glower, I just realized. I know what it means, but I don't even know how to say it. But anyway, these guys, if you stand in front of them, I think is how it works. Oh, apparently not. I can swear those guys come to life at some point, and you have to uh, use a certain item that we don't yet have in order to defeat them. Let's see, I don't know what this guy's selling either. I don't remember if it's important. Arrows. Okay, so yeah, he just kind of revealed what the item is going to be that we're going to have to use pretty soon here. And that's going to be the bow. And I know we have to take some of those statue guys out with the bow once we get it. Maybe they don't come to life until then. And then it looks like that's the Minish Woods. So if we ever happen to find ourselves over there again, we'll go check that out. Of course, if I don't end up going back there in the main story, I'll just go back before the game's over to get all the kinstone fusions. Let's see, maybe I'll have... oops, that's right, unequipped that. Maybe I'll have better luck over here. Ooh. And then we still can't swim, so we don't want to go into the uh, deeper water there at all. Let's see what's over here. I think later on there's going to be a kinstone fusion uh, reward over here, but I'm not sure if there's anything right now that we need, so it won't hurt to check. 
Anyway, I think this whole area is pretty cool, like I said earlier. Um, you don't get swamps too often in Zelda, to the best of my knowledge. I mean, there's the Southern Swamp in Majora's Mask, which is a fun area. Okay, we got a little bunch of little monsters here. Don't remember what we get from this, but I hope it's good. Anyway, you have the Southern Swamp, which is a pretty cool area, and then you have the Castor Wilds. Now, I think there's some swamp-type places in Breath of the Wild, but... I can't think of any other times that there's a swamp in these games, so they're pretty unique. Oh, okay, there's the bow. Nice. Just in this random tiny hole in the ground, we get a bow for some reason. I'll take it. But anyway, for anyone watching, um, what is your favorite swamp area in the Zelda games? There might be some more that I'm forgetting about, but comment below. What's your favorite swamp type of area and why? For me, it's probably the southern swamp in Majora's Mask, but I think this would be pretty close. Anyway, do I want to go up here yet? Okay, we can't get there just yet. We'll just dash back down here. And now, if I remember correctly, we should be able to take these guys out. Okay, that's when they start moving, after you shoot them. So you have to go aggro on them in order for them to move. It's good to know. Oh, come on, I'm over here. Okay, these guys move really slow. Okay, there we go. That took more arrows than I expected. But now we can head up here. It's been really fun, dis uh, not discovering, but rediscovering things in this game, because Minish Cap it's not one of the games I know like absolutely the least in the series, but it's definitely not one of the ones that I knew the most going into this. So it's been fun to actually rediscover things. Um, like in Skyward Sword, when I was playing through that, I knew pretty much where everything was. I was able to get through it pretty quickly, but in Minish Cap I've had to go a little slower and really um, find things again, as if for the first time, so that's been a lot of fun. Okay, this, I think we have to get a certain kinstone. Yeah, we can't do anything with this yet, I don't think. Won't let me grab it, so I'm assuming that's a kinstone piece type of thing. Um, let's see, I think we're going to be needing both of these items, so I'll unequip the sword for now. I think that's the first time I've done that since I got it. And then here we get another um, one of these. I won't spoil what it is, but it will be very useful pretty soon. I think that's the third one we've found so far. Let's see, is it five arrows for each of these guys? I think that was four or five. Okay, so maybe it doesn't hurt you if you run into those, or maybe it's only if you're walking normally. Maybe the Pegasus boots ignore the damage, but they look like they would hurt. And then we'll make another shortcut. Okay, so this part I do remember. I think this is our first time seeing a gold kinstone piece. And we're going to need to use a few of these in this area to unlock the way forward. But I don't remember exactly how to get to that spot. Oh, here it is. So there's these three guys, and then you have to fuse a gold piece with all of them um, before you can move on. 
Okay, that's the wrong one. That looks right. So then we'll just have to find the other two of these gold pieces in this area. So it's a fun little scavenger hunt. I enjoy it, personally. It's actually a little bit hard to navigate through the swamp when they put those brambles in the way. And yeah, I've already sort of lost my way around here. I have no idea where the other two gold pieces are. But like I said, I actually enjoy having to look around and hunt for them. Okay, it looks like if I go up there, there's another statue guy to take down. Uh, here we go. I love the Pegasus boots in this game. It's so nice being able to just go quickly everywhere. Um, let's see... That's not what I wanted. There we go. I hope we get quiver upgrades in this game, because I'm actually using quite a few arrows already. Okay, so we got a red kinstone piece. That's not exactly what I... Oh no. Well, that's lame. I'm trying to save money here, not lose it. Okay, we got some back. That's good. Okay, so we got our money back and then some. That's good, because I want to buy that newsletter thing. But anyway, that does not get us any closer to our gold pieces that we're looking for, unfortunately. I did not mean to jump down there either, but looks like we can get right back up. Let's see, where have I not been yet? I don't think I've gone inside this cave down here. Let's see, it looks like there's one. Okay, I have not been over here yet. This should be something good. In fact, I think I remember there's a mini boss coming up down here. The map in this game is actually pretty detailed. I appreciate that. You can see, like, the specific paths and stuff uh, from the pause menu. Yep, here we go. Huh. So, a guardian is protecting the treasure? Take care while fighting it. So, we get Dark Nuts and Minish Cap, which is pretty cool. And they can actually be decently tough. In fact, they're probably harder in this game than they are in Twilight Princess, which is a little bit ironic. But yeah, you just kind of have to get past their shields, and thankfully your shield can block their giant swords. They're honestly pretty fun to fight in this game. That guy went down a little bit quicker than I expected, but... I at least felt like I had to be careful with where I was slashing and my timing and all that. And then later on, you get harder versions, so... I actually really like the Dark Nuts in this game. In the first Zelda game, they're just kind of... They're, they're difficult, but like for the wrong reasons. They're just kind of annoying. In Twilight Princess, they're like too easy. Well... They're hard when they gang up on you, but one-on-one -on -one they're easy with all the hidden skills, but in this game they feel like a good in-between. There we go, that takes care of that guy. Anyway, we have one more piece left, and I think it's in that cave on the right up there, so I need to try to get over there. But yeah, without this map, I would honestly be pretty lost here, because this area is surprisingly confusing. I never would have thought to even come back here. But yeah, I like that you can see all of the vines, all of the cave entrances. It's a really good little map, actually.
I don't know if there's like a fast strat for these guys, but there we go. I think that's the fast strat. It would be nice if I could have just one more um, item slot in this game. I feel like the sword should just be kind of a permanent thing. If they made a remake, maybe that's something they could fix. And I, I hope they do remake this game someday. I think it deserves another chance. In fact, I just put a video about that subject on my main channel, FP Productions. And I think this and the Oracles are the most likely slash deserving games to get a remake next. I personally hope they don't do it in the style of Link's Awakening for the Oracles um, if they remake one, but I, I, I'm sure they would. So I might just have to deal with that. But anyway, we have all three of our pieces now, so we'll just head on back. And then, let's see, we did the middle one first, so we want to do this one. Last but not least, this one. And with that, we can head into the southern part of this area, the Wild Ruins. Start out with a cave right away, I don't remember what's in here. Okay, just another kinstone. I'll take it. Okay, these guys are interesting. I think you have to... Okay, so for now you just slash away at them, but later in this area they're gonna be more of a puzzle, I think. And then there's a Minish Portal. see what this guy has to say. These soldier statues here were built by the Minish ages ago to help humans. It's kind of a secret, but there's a switch inside that turns them on or off. So yeah, that's a clue as to how you're supposed to get past this guy coming up here. If you notice on their shield, there's kind of a ladder which the Minish can climb right up. And then you just reignite his his brain, basically, if we can call it that. And now, he can move out of our way. It's kind of interesting that apparently they were originally supposed to help humans. I guess they're guarding this place, but it makes you wonder, like, who are they guarding it from? And what was this upcoming dungeon originally? I don't know if there's any theories on that actually, because Minish Cap's a little more obscure than some of the other Zelda games. Let's see, I saw... Okay, it looks like I can definitely do that as a Minish, but am I able to get there right now? No, because this grass is too tall. Hmm. That's odd. I wonder how to get up there is Minish. Maybe that's something you have to do later in the game. Interesting. Or maybe it's coming up up here. Yeah, there's lots of little vines that Minish Link can climb down. Oh, okay, here we go. I'm very curious to see what's down there, because I actually don't remember. I feel like I'm saying that a lot this episode. And then I think 
we have to go down this one. Yep, and there's a little ridge for us to walk on. Okay, so we get a full-on cave. I hope there's something good at the end. Ooh, a piece of heart. Nice. I always felt like pieces of heart were great rewards because they, I mean, they literally add to your health. And getting them just kind of feels special compared to getting rupees. But lately, when I've looked at comments on videos and stuff, like talking about, I don't know, like side quests or things like that in older Zelda games, uh, I always see people talking about Pieces of Heart as though they're underwhelming awards, which um, surprises me a lot, actually, because I've always loved when I find heart pieces. I've always felt like they were really good rewards, actually. Anyway, it looks like we can't go further that way. So I'm not sure what the point of that other vine is, maybe just to throw us off a little bit. Anyway, now that we're back in human size, we'll continue on this way. Although I think I actually should have stayed in Minish form. Yep. Because we have to turn the next soldier statue on. Oh, but I cleared a path for myself conveniently. That was nice. I figured once I used the portal, the grass would revert back, but that's a welcome surprise. There we go. Didn't you didn't want to move for a second? There we go. Looks like we're almost at our next dungeon. Let's see, what's the deal here? Okay. Looks like... Okay, so this guy we for sure want to deactivate. I wonder if we get something for deactivating all of them. I'm assuming those statues are gonna move or something. No? I'm not able to grab them. Interesting. Well, I'll come back to that later. Oh yeah, with our new Rock Breaker ability, we can just kind of expose those guys without having to use the Gust Jar. That's pretty convenient. Okay, wait, that cleared away those statues. Okay, now I have to know. I have to see if defeating those other guys unlocks the way to that treasure. Come on. There we go. And we get a kinstone piece for our troubles. Nice. Okay, so that puts us closer to our rupee goal. And then that doesn't seem to be anything important, so we will move on. Alright, so we have arrived at the third dungeon, which means I'm going to wrap this episode up here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.